Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we bless your name this morning. We give you honor and glory and praise for you are God. You are king, Father. There is none like unto thee. Who is like unto thee? Fearful and praises doing wonders. We thank you, God, for another privilege of coming in your presence, God. We thank you for waking us and starting us on our way, Father. Indeed, it indeed a privilege, Lord God, to be found in the house of the Lord this morning. And we praise you for all that you have done for us, that all that you continue to do, God in our lives and through our lives, Father. This morning we recognize, Lord God, that we need you. Lord God, had it not been for God on our side, where would we have been this morning? And so, Father, this morning as we recognize God, your God, your omnipotence, as we recognize, Lord God, your authority, as we recognize, Lord Jesus, your power, Lord God, Father, Lord, we recognize, Lord Jesus, that we indeed need you. We need you, Lord God, Father, to lift our spirits this morning. We need you, Lord God, to touch our bodies, Lord God. We need you, Lord God, Father, Lord Jesus, to charge our lives, to restore us, to revive us this morning. Lord God, this morning we exchange our garments of heaviness for the garments of praise as we lift our hearts to you this morning. God, we lift every person in your, in, in your midst, those on the line. God, we lift our, our circumstances and our situation before you, knowing God that you are in control, knowing God that you are able. And so we entrust our lives into your, li into your hands and we pray, Lord God, that you will touch us. Lord God, we need another touch, Lord God, from your hands this morning. Oh God, even as we come and we bring our sacrifices of praise unto you, may it be a sweet savor. May it be acceptable in your presence, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we lift this service to your throne and we pray, God, for every minister and servant, Lord God, every child, God, that will minister this morning, every adult, Lord God, even as they minister to Lord God, I pray for a fresh anointing, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will indeed use them, Lord God, to speak your word. Oh God, a word that will bring encouragement, a word that will bring life, a word, Lord Jesus, God, that will lift the spirit of the downtrodden this morning. And so, God, I pray, Lord God, that our praises, our ministry, Lord God, will be accepted. Lord God, recognizing Lord Jesus that people need you and as we voice forth God your word to the songs God, to the recitation Lord God, to your spoken word that someone will come to know you as Lord and Savior, someone Lord God will be delivered and set free, someone Lord God will find themselves in your presence this morning kneeling at your throne. Hallelujah. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we recognize, Lord God, that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes as a distraction this morning. May in the name of Jesus, we, dis we destroy his plans. We come to rack, Lord God, his strategies. And we pray, Lord God, that you will take preeminence. You will have your way, Lord God. Anoint the musicians one more time anoint Lord God the ones that will come to lead us in music and songs of worship anoint the ushers even as they usher people in your presence this morning anoint God your, your man servant that will bring your word this morning oh God we thank you we thank you God that we will rather be in no other place than in your presence this morning so God come come and minister to your servants this morning morning. Use us as ever you need someone to do your blessed will, God. Use us, Lord God. 
each and every one of us, uh, from the pulpit to the pews, God, to the doorways, God. We pray, Lord God, that your anointing, God, will bring change and transformation on those, God, around the sanctuary, Lord God, as they hear your word. Oh, God, that transformation and change will be wrought. And so, God, we uproot the plans and the purposes of the enemy. We uproot the strongholds, Lord God, that somewhat seems to be prevailing. But, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your anointing will break every yoke and set the captive free this morning. Oh, God, set the captive free. Set the captive free. Those that are bound up in chains, Lord God. Those, God, Lord Jesus, that are ensnared by the wicked one. Fly every trap this morning. Break every yoke, Lord God, and set your people free this morning. Set them free, Lord God. Set them free this morning, Lord Jesus. Set them free. Lord God, I pray that men and women and boys and girls will come to experience you as Lord and Master even as your word has gone forth Lord Jesus I pray Lord God that man will come to know you Lord God women and boys and girls will come to experience your love this morning we thank you Lord God your word says truly truly the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few and I pray, Lord God, even as we are reminded by your word, Lord God, that we will make ourselves available, Lord God, Lord Jesus, to be laborers together with you. Oh, God, co-laborers working with you, God, in the vineyard, Lord Jesus, reaping, Lord God, reaping the fruits, Lord Jesus, that you have there waiting, waiting for that man waiting for that woman that would avail themselves and so God I pray that even as we avail ourselves to you that you will use us God use us this morning God we avail ourselves to you and we give you praise and we give you thanks for what you will do in this service and through this service this morning we give you honor and glory in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus amen and praise God Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Warm, warm and welcome to our beloved family and friends in the sanctuary, all those persons online, our online family and friends and even acquaintances, a warm, warm welcome to you. Indeed, it is good to be here. We thank you for joining us for our har harvest celebration. Indeed, we are already challenged this morning that people need the Lord. People need the Lord. And the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Are you going to sign up to be a laborer this morning? And you know, there's no special qualifications. All you have to do is to have a relationship with him. Once you've accepted him as your personal and dwelling savior, you have the gift of salvation, you can be a laborer in this vineyard. We need persons to join us so that we can be channels of blessings, channels of spreading the gospel so that others can come into relationship with God. There are many lost souls and they are in need of a savior. So I trust this morning, even as we engage in worship and we hear strong messages through recitations and, and poetry and such like, that you will be challenged this morning, we will be challenged this morning to labor on or to start to labor because if you haven't started, now is the time. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Bless be to, to the Lord. Amen. You may ask yourself, is it harvest time? I say yes. It's always harvest time. It doesn't matter the season. No is harvest time. So I'm going to invite 
Alyssa Paris to tell you all about it. It's always harvesting. Let's give her a warm, rousing applause. Lady Paris. Good morning. <laughs> it's always harvest time. Not just at harvest time do we need to have a reason. We can plant seeds of hope in and out of every season. We can reach souls to Jesus no matter the time of year. It doesn't have to be autumn. Harvest time is always here. Seeds of faith can be planted into the hearts of everyone, whether it be in the rain or in the warm blanket of the sun. We can gather in the lost or bring back a wandering soul. It needeth be in the fall for the harvest God controls. It's always harvest time. We don't need to have a reason. We can sow seeds of hope in and out of every season. Excellent. Amen. Praise be to God. What a strong message. It's always harvest time. We don't need to have a reason. We can sow seeds of hope in and out of every season. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Well done. We thank you for challenging us this morning. At this time, we are going to have lessons from The Harvest by Sister Malia McKenzie. Lessons from Harvest. Nature teaches lessons profound and deep. In every harvest season, promises to keep. With every seed sown, with care and love, is washed over by the heavens above. Trust the process, whether it be rain or shine, for in due time, the crops will be thine. Patience and faith, let them be your guide. With the Lord by your side, nothing to hide. From the tilling of the soil to the final glean, life's journey is vast with much unseen. Yet, with Yet, belief and hard work, hand in hand, abundant blessings await just as he planned. Praise be to God. Do you believe? Are you willing and ready to put in the hard work? So hand in hand, we are going to trust God, believe, put in the hard work, and abundant blessings would await us just as he planned. Glory be to God. We are going to engage in a season of worship. We want to worship this great and mighty God who has strengthened, who has strengthened us and continue to help us to labor on. And even as we engage in worship, I pray that we will give him our best praise. I'm going to invite Sister Jonelle Owls and her, Owls Corbin and her team, and we are going to sing, and we are going to give God our best praise. Amen and amen. A pleasant good morning to one of all those of you who are here, those of you who are in the hearing of my voice, and those of you who are joining us online. We just want to give God all the praise and honor that's due to his name. He is a wonderful God, isn't he? Amen. Shall you stand with me as we sing this morning? And the theme that would have been chosen for our harvest is labor on. And... Sometimes we get weary. Not so. Everybody at some point in time in the natural, they get tired. So too in the spiritual. Sometimes we feel a bit weary. Sometimes we feel like giving up. Sometimes we feel like throwing in the towel for a number of different reasons. Some can be that we're not seeing the fruits of our labor, as we should say. We're not seeing the progress that we want to see. But... Our theme this morning encourages us to labor on, to continue on. You know, even though sometimes we might want to throw in the towel, we get tired. You know, continue on. I saw a post recently. These are not the exact words, but the, the gist of it was, the devil can't get you taken out, so he's going to wear you out. So don't let him, even when he tries to wear us out, 
Let us draw our strength from God and labor on. Amen. I want us to start this morning by greeting each other, moving out of our spaces, and we are going to sing a song that I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with it, but we would sing this song at school sometimes, and it says it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And Malia talked about the, the, the harvest and the natural, you know, how it is in the natural. A little spark can set a whole cane feel of fire. One little spark and all the cane gone. So this morning, we want that the spark that sets our fire going is the love of God. That's how it is with God's love. Huh? Once we've experienced it and we share it to the person who's next to us and they share it with somebody else in their family, that's how we can labor on in God's vineyard. Amen? So I'm just going to ask you, you know, just to greet someone you have not, can't say seen in a while, but you know, greet someone this morning and let's spread some love. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. And soon all those around can warm up to its going. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. trees are budding, the birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love, once you've experienced it, you want to sing, it's fresh like spring, you want to pass it on. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. I want the world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Amen. We're going to continue by saying, that song, when Israel out of bondage came, and a sea before them lay, something that was a, a, a stumbling block, a, lo a blockade, something that kept them from getting to where they wanted to go. But God parted the sea. And I pray that as we labor on, when we come to that mountain, that stumbling block, that thing in our life that 
you know, it's bearing us down, getting us tired and frustrated that we remember that God can part the sea. And he wants us to forward still, continue. Push up, we 
Jehovah's will, though the billows dash and spray with a conquering thread, we will push ahead because he will roll the seas away. Press along, saints. Press along, saints, in God's own way. Persecution will come. Troubles and trials, they will come. But the hotter, the battle be quite honest, that bit there is a bit difficult for me to swallow sometimes. I mean, the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. I thought the hotter the battle, the worse the blows. But we got to believe the sweeter the victory. Amen. Press along, sis, press along in God's own way. Press along, sis, press along in God's own way. Persecution you will face. Troubles and trials come our way. But the hunter, the battle, the sweeter, the victory. Press along, press along, sis, press along in God's own way. Press along, sis, press along in God's own way. Persecution you will face. Troubles and trials in our way. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nation. Tell them that Jesus. Tell them that the Comforter. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. Press along, sins, press along in God's own way. Press along, sins, press along in God's own way. Persecution. Troubles and trials in our way. Fight the heart of the battle. You can tell the world, you can tell the nation, tell them that Jesus, he brings joy Amen. We are continuing by saying, I am trading my sorrows. I am trading my shame. I am laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And we got to trade them if we're going to labor on. Sometimes these are the very things that keep us, you know, get us tired and weary and want to give up. So this morning, let's declare that we're going to trade them for the joy of the Lord.
you did not abandon, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse for this promise, well and joy. That is joy is going to be my strength. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. I'm trading, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying that down for the joy of the Jehovah, you, I trust. And the only way we can trade them is if we trust in him. Believe in him and believe that he can do it. Faith. Jehovah, you, I trust. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders.
If you don't believe this morning, I pray that you will taste and see. You know, taste and believe that he is God. And even as we collect this morning's tithes and offering, we are soldiers in God's army. And a Walmart army never win a battle yet. <laughs> well, yeah, unless it's Jesus. <laughs> so we are soldiers in God's army and we are going up together. The only way we can see or you know make any progress as if we do it together as a body amen
offering God we just want to thank you Lord thank you for blessing our hands thank you for allowing us to be able to give back to you God I pray oh God that even in our finances that we are overcomers we are victorious yeah. God yeah. and we you know be given to you and that this church will be victorious God and that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus name amen amen and bless the Lord. Truly, we were encouraged by those numbers. We can press on. We can labor on. Because the Holy Spirit that is in you will empower, equip, and enable you. The battle may be rough. The going may be tough. But we're so glad that God is with us and for us. And together, we will soldier on. And we will bring lost souls into his kingdom. We will do the work and he will do his part. So this morning, I challenge you again, sign up for this labor. No qualifications necessary except, as I said, having the free gift of salvation. And you don't have to work for the free gift of salvation. It is free. So if you don't have it this morning, you can have it, and then we can all together as co-laborers work to build up and advance his kingdom. Because you remember, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, and we want to join the laborers this morning. Amen? Amen? Amen. So are we going up together? Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers in the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Jono and your team. Truly, we were blessed, encouraged, and inspired. Praise be to God. All those who came in after, I would have welcomed you warmly. I want to welcome you to our harvest service, our celebration. And truly, I know that you have been blessed and encouraged and even challenged so far as we continue in our service. I want to invite Aaron Paris, and he is going to tell us about the seeds of faith, and this is going to be followed by the Lord's Harvest of Plenty by Sister McCollin. And directly after that, the Combine Choir is going to bless us with two special numbers. One special number. Where's KP? KP Smith? Come on, let's encourage him. <laughs> oh. Seeds of faith. With every seed we gently plant, faith's foundation firm and grant. As roots dig deep and stands grow tall, God's love nourishes through it all. God's love nourishes through it all. Amen. Rain or shine through, storm or calm. His guidance, his guidance serves as a smooth and bam. Just as crops need time to grow, our faith in him will only glow. Patient, trust, and loving care, and his embrace nothing to bear. For in every harvest, in every birth, we see the miracles of his earth. Good job. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord.
morning. The, the Lord's harvest of plenty. What a truly awesome thought indeed, that throughout your day, you live among the seed. Not the seed that one find in the ground. These seeds are planted by the children of God. As they simply follow the path of the Savior's has struck, your life as a Christian, not merely good deeds, as the faithful witness could plant one of these seeds. As your life may be busy with a seed you don't know, and your faithful witness is helping that little seed grow. Planting and watering as a Christian is all we afford. When all the growth of that seed comes from the Lord, after a little growth, it's no longer a seed, but a new verbal Christian prepared for a seed. The deed that have been prepared, I'm sure that you know, is to plant some new seeds and to help water and help grow. Once they have grown, they are cut with God's sickle of love and taken by the Lord in their father's home above. Whether the numbers are few or there are many, you can be part of the Lord's harvest of plenty. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's harvest of plenty. All can be part of it. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Truly, we were challenged this morning. Will there be any stars in your crown? I want a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of stars. And we still have time. We still have time. We are going to labor on and press on so that our stars are right, our, our, our crown is bright with a lot of stars. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'll be looking out for you. All right? Amen. Bless, bless be to the Lord. We thank God for the combine choir rendering that song, Will There Be Any Stars? Truly, we were blessed by that ministry. At this time, we're going to direct our attention to our scripture reading, Matthew 13, verse 9 to 16. Matthew 13, verse 9 to 16. And uh, directly after that, we are going to be hearing for our minister for this morning. We have with us our brother Merlin Yard. He is our District Wesleyan Men Director. And truly this morning, we are privileged to have him in our sanctuary to share with us. And I know that God has given him a word. We don't only want to be hearers of the word, but we also want to be doers so that when we we Go from here that we are challenged this morning, that we are applying God's word, and we are going to go out, and we are going to win lost souls, and we are going to get some stars. Amen? Amen. Matthew 13, verse 9 to 16, and Sister Caroline is going to come to read to us, and directly after that, we invite our ministering servant, Brother Merlin Yard, and he's coming all the way from Shekinah, St. Philip. <laughs> and we are so glad to have him and his lovely wife this morning with him. Amen. Blessed, good morning to everyone. And the Bible lesson reads, He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he, he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that day. You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull. And with their ears, they can barely hear. And their eyes, they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Here ends the morning lesson. Good morning, a blessed good morning to you. Good morning, we give the Lord thanks and praise for being able to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I want to make sure that this technology is working right. All right. Once I get this technology working right, then I will be able to speak to you and make some semblance of saints. <laughs> Good. Praise God. I bring greetings to you from Shekinah Wesleyan, my pastor, the Reverend David Garner, and the LBA at Shekinah. I also bring greetings to you this morning from the district uh, men executive and the district board of administration. I bring greetings from my lovely wife, um, Sheldine. I'll tell you a little bit about her later on. <laughs> and my children, Portia and Denisa. And I thank God for the opportunity uh, to be here. I greet and address the angel of the house, Reverend 
Taylor, thank you for this gracious invitation. It is indeed a privilege and an honor. The privilege is mine. The honor is mine to be here in this setting. I see some familiar faces. Sister Natasha. <laughs> Sister Andrea. Okay. I see... Sister Taylor. Oh, oh, praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. I thank God for his grace today. God is, God is so good. I told you I was going to tell you a little bit about her. You see right there? This is my high school sweetheart. Yes. My high school sweetheart. She didn't used to pay me no money at school. <laughs> She used to tell me, move around me a little force, right, little man? <laughs> but I labored on. <laughs> 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 and today we have, um, and today my high school sweetheart is my wife of 33 years. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Not because he's all this fantastic fellow, you know. <laughs> This right here is a very patient woman. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hallelujah. I'd not be for grace. Because this fellow here talking to you is strong medicine, so you got to take me a small doses. <laughs> Some days I can't even take on myself. <laughs> work with me here, you know. So I want you to work with me this morning as we go into God's word. You know, this has been a challenging week. I know for sure. Anytime God gives you a word, he challenges you with the same word. He tests you with it. So before we get into prayer and get into the word this morning, you have the opportunity now to either turn off your ear hearing it <laughs> or leave. You know, because God is going to hold you responsible to the word that you have heard this morning. Amen? Amen? So now let's get down seriously to the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. The entrance of your word gives light. And the unfolding thereof gives understanding to the simple. Cause our simple minds, almighty God, to grasp the depths and the truth of your word that we may be able to integrate it into our lives and walk it out and bring glory to your name in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. My text this morning is Matthew 13, and the text is from verses 1 to 23. Amen? I trust that you have been praying for me. Yes, I think I believe, I felt those prayers because this has been a challenging week. Believe me, it has been challenging. The title of my message is Until the Harvest is Gone, Labor On. Until the harvest is gone, labor on. I want to address you on the theme of laboring on for the love of the Lord of the harvest. Laboring on for the love of the Lord of the harvest. How many know that? Labor can be hard. It ain't easy. And you would want to give up. And you are tempted to give up. And anybody who have been committed to anything for a long period of time knows that you have your moments. You have your times. And there are times you say, you see this? I dealt with this. You see she? I dealt with she. You see, he, I doubt with he. But we're laboring for the Lord 
of the harvest. I want to address my thoughts and lead your thoughts this morning to the seed, the sower, and the success of the harvest. The seed, the sower, and the success of the harvest. I think that this is so poised and so put. I know that the Holy Spirit is giving us a message this morning. He is speaking to us because we ask God for a word for the people. If I come and speak, my words to you are of little effect. They may entertain you. They may anger you. They may discourage you or even encourage you. But my words are of little effect to you. But the word of God, the words that God speaks, these words are spirit and they are life. Amen? Praise the Lord. Work with me. Talk to me. You know, you like this stuff. Talk to me. Yeah, you can say you can say amen. I bring my own amens, but you, you, you know, if something touches you, you can speak as well. Amen. Praise God. Crop time in Barbados is very in is a very involved and comprehensive exercise. From since 1649 to date, we have had approximately 674 cane harvests. Or maybe more considering considering the at one point, like Guyana had two harvest crops in a year. So, remember one time in Barbados, we used to reap cane twice a year? Yes, we did. Right? Yes. It demanded all hands to the task. And if the crop, if the crop were to be successful. So, what's, what kind of people we had working in the crop? Because we only think about the cutters and the loaders and the people at the factory. But we had cutters, cooks, loaders, drivers, operators, boilers, mechanics, engineers, welders, administrators, wage negotiators, management teams, sales and marketing team, shipping and distribution. A lot of people are involved and employed in the harvest. Though slave labor drove the success of this industry long after slavery ended for workers and machinery is still crucial uh, to the survival of the industry and the sugar harvest although the production yield has plummeted and factories have moved from 26 operational to to two or we got one all right to one this industry still provides employment for hundreds of workers at crop time. At crop time, many things uh, change for workers. How they sleep and eat, especially if they're working in the fields and factories. I know my, my great-grandmother used to work in the field. All right? Frail old lady, but strong. Good workers make necessary adjustments to get the job done. Good workers don't adjust or they don't just come to work to do a job. They provide a service to the organization that contributes to the overall success of the harvest. Martin Luther King Jr. says, Not everyone can be famous, but everyone can be great. Because greatness is determined by your service. Not everyone can be famous. But everyone can be great. Because greatness is determined by your service. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I want to share some thoughts with you concerning the seed of the harvest. The seed of the harvest. The opportunities and the threats 
that present with the harvest. Got to get this here working. The seed of the harvest. What is the seed of the harvest? Because you can't plant cucumbers and reap edos. One Calypsonian said, if you plant potatoes, you can reap potatoes. I want all you to know, you can reap what you sow. You're going to reap what we sow. Luke 8, 11 says, every time, the, 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 the Luke 8, 11 says that the word, the seed is the word. The seed is the word. Every time the word of the kingdom is spoken, the eternal, abundant, Life potential is released in the atmosphere. I want to say that again. Every time the word of the kingdom of God is spoken, the eternal abundant life potential is released in the atmosphere. And whatever it touches, it ignites and, transform and the transformation process begins because the word is live it is active it is very very potent hebrews 4 12 says i believe you can quote it from the top of your head for the word of god is sh quick it is sharper than any two-edged sword dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and it is a divider of the thoughts and the intents and the purposes of the heart. The word of God is potent. So the seed is the word. The seed of the harvest is also the thing that comes in contact with the people and brings change and transformation. The seed is so powerful. It is so potent. God knows everything that the seed will become is in the seed. The harvest is in the seed. And therefore, the enemy knows, Satan knows, that if I could ever get at the seed, I can affect the harvest. So seed on the pathway, when we read Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from the, C, the Christian Standard Bible. I'm just going to read a few verses here. I want to put it in, in, in modern English because for me, the King James, James Version, when I get to the D's and the D's and the D's and the wherefores and the wherewithals and things, I get a little tangled, right? So work with me here. Work with me. I'm still under construction. It says on that day, from verse 1, it says on that day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. And such a large crowd gathered around him. He got into a boat and sat down. And while the whole crowd stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, Consider the sower who went out to sow, and he sowed some seed, and the seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Because Satan knows that if a hardened, downtrodden, callous heart is penetrated in some way 
by the word of the kingdom of God. The hearer, in some way, shape, or form, gets a microcosm of understanding. His influence is compromised on that person. And his prison is breached. The word of God is potent. We may not think that it is having any effect. But they have some people out there that's been through some stuff. Their hearts are hardened. Life has been difficult to them. They have made some wrong decisions. And thus, because of the decisions that they have made, some things begin to happen to them. Just yesterday evening, my, my wife called me. She was out with my daughter. They were driving and they were coming home. And my wife called me. She said, I want you to come down the gap quickly. Because there was a man in a wheelchair. And he was meandering all over the road. And he was moving into traffic. And he was coming. And he was within the community. But sometimes people come through the community a little bit too fast. And she was concerned about him. But they couldn't, because the man was a double amputee. And these two ladies couldn't get him into the car, to lift him into the car. This is a big man, 34 years old, a big man, you know, bigger than me. So they couldn't lift him. They couldn't get him into the small vehicle. So she called me. She said, we, we're not far from home. Come. So I walked and I came down. And, you know, uh, I saw him, and I got him home. You know, I walked him, wheeled him home. But sharing with him, he shared with me uh, some regrets that he had, some choices that he made that contributed to the condition that he was in. And then he started to share with me, some things that people did to him. And I recognized that his heart was becoming hardened. He was downtrodden. Some people butt it hard in life. And from the hardening of the heart, then it becomes callous. But I want you to know that the word can penetrate it. But here's what Satan does. When he meets people that are downtrodden and callous and he knows it. What he does is he come and snatch the word away. He uses one of his most potent weapons in his arsenal. You know what that weapon is? Distraction. You see entertainment? Entertainment has its benefits. But it can be a great distraction. I know why you're talking about. Social media. Anybody playing Monopoly? Don't raise your hand online. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But it can be a distraction. And sometimes, sometimes when you see uh, people, I am, I am not advocating substance abuse. That's the disclaimer here. But I want you to understand that when we see people, we have to have a degree of compassion for them. Because when you and I are faced with the challenges of life, and we go through the vicissitudes of life. What do we do in trouble? We pray. Sometimes we may call up a sister and say, girl, let me tell you something. This is a hot one. This is a hard challenge. What, what, what the worship team said? The hot, sometimes you take that hot of the battle. <laughs> but sometimes you know for sure the hot of the battle. Oh, Lord, the hot of the legs. 
Delays. And you've got to call somebody to pray you through. I don't know about you, but I have been in places in my life when I could not pray. When I was contemplating exiting this world because of the challenges of life. I moved from taking an aircraft to work to having no job. Mortgage to pay. Children to send to school. Food to eat. The only body working is the wife in the house. Now we tell you she's a patient woman. Call most women with the sit. Peace out. <laughs> See you. Catch you on the corner. <laughs> yeah. Yes, most, you know what I mean? I should say some women would have done that. But she stuck with me. Oh, Lord, help me. But had not been for people praying for me, praying with me, and praying me through. I, any, I got a witness in here. Anybody know what we're talking about? Yes. But people who don't know Christ and they don't know what we know, you know what they do? <sighs> Quarter pound of weed. Yeah. They turn to cocaine. That's true. They turn to alcohol. They turn to chemicals to help them to escape. They turn to different things to distract them from the seriousness of life. Like watch, give me an example. I like to people watch. Go to a funeral. Especially at the larger churches, the Anglican church, and you will see. Especially if it's someone from the community, you have a group of people that will come. They ain't going in the church, you know. They can stop outside. They can talk. They can talk about the weather. They can talk from lavas, pavas. They may go out by the shop if it's close by and get a drink. And sometimes we fall victim or we should say, we, we are the ones that sometimes say, you know, we'll come to the funeral for the come. You know, you can come here and you can drink. We didn't stop home or something. But let me tell you something. Many of those persons cannot deal with their own mortality, you know. When you come to, the scripture tells us it's better to be in the house of mourning than to be in the house of mirth. When, when, when you're at Q and when you're, when you're fetting and partying and all, Oh, man, you head well. You're not thinking about life. But when you come to a funeral and you see that person there, the reality sets in upon you and let you know, you know, that could be me next. And some people cannot deal with that. So their hearts are hardened and downtrodden. So God wants for us to understand that this is, this is what it is and be compassionate when we share the word. The seed on the petrous soil, that is the rocky soil, is scorched by the sun. So we have the seed on the pathway that is snatched by Satan. And the seed on the, on the petrous soil that is scorched by the sun. The word of the kingdom comes under threat as problems and persecution present and, persist in the, and persist in the heart of the hearer. Their expectations are shot when they return and they return to their default position. People come and they give their life to the Lord. And they say, yes, they hear the word. When they hear it, they receive it with joy. But when the pressures of life. Uh, there's a song that says, when the pressure brought, drop. Red boy, what are you going to do? You know, when the pressure drop. So when the pressure drops. These people can't persist. They return to their default position. So if it is a substance that used to help them get through the, 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 the issues, they're going back to that. If it is jumping in somebody else's bed that don't belong to you, they go back to that. Whatever they can do to relieve the stress 
to handle the pressure they go back to. They are afraid to risk the familiar for the unfamiliar because we come and we tell them and rightly so, we tell them about the kingdom and they receive the kingdom and they are happy about it but they, but, but they did not expect or anticipate that the kingdom will come with pressure. Jesus did not hide it from us. He said, in this world you will have trouble. You can have trouble. So don't pretend that you're not going to have it. You're going to have it. They are afraid to, to risk the familiar for the unfamiliar, although they received it with joy. I want to move on and say that the seed on prickly soil. So the seed, the seed that fall on the pathway, the seed that is on the petrous or the rocky soil that is scorched by the sun, but then we come across the seed on prickly soil. This is suffocated by situations. I know the older ones here, the, the, the mature saints can tell the younger one, life ain't easy here. Life isn't easy. A tutor of mine once told me that um, in, 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 in working with a little, a little one, she was about 12 years old, just, um, I think, moved into second form in Harrison College, but she spent, spent a lot of time with her granddad, and she and her granddad do everything together. And he, rem oh, man, that was his grandbaby, baby girl, you know? And he remember asking that little one, so what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, you want to retire? She want to retire. She, yeah, she want to retire. <laughs> well, retirement sweet, so we can skip the work. <laughs> she want to retire. She want to be with like, be with granddad. You know, she had granddad all to herself. So she want to retire like granddad. Look, the word of the kingdom is choked by the stresses of everyday life and the temptations of treasure. The temptations of treasure. The scripture tells us that, look, it says here, and others and said, and other seed, right, fell among thorns, prickly, you know, thorns, thorns are prickly. And they came up and they choked it. And they choked it. Listen. Life situations present either a health challenge or a financial challenge. And both of these can create relationship challenges. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. But you don't want all dry talk. You want money, money. You can't, you can't go to the supermarket. I say, see me here. This car got money. You know? So, and, and if you have health challenges, that may affect your ability to work. And sometimes you have all three of these things compounded on you one time. So, before the hearer can recover from one, another is upon them. And the deception of, if I had the money, I will have no worries. You, you, ever, heard, you ever heard this statement? Man, if I win the lotto, boy. If I had a million dollars, no. All this would be, everything would be fine. But how many of us know that a million dollars in the hands of somebody that don't know what to do with it. They will be worse off. Yes, for sure. That thought slithers in. And they are down the rabbit hole. Chasing after elusive fantasies. Thus, the crowding out of the word. And diminishing it effectively. I want you to know that you and I and everyone else around us, when the word of God is spoken, we are not aware of the spiritual battles that are on. Even now, even now, the enemy is trying to distract you, to get you off from hearing what God has to say to you because he knows 
that that word is quick, it is active, it is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Listen. The seed is not only on prickly soil, which is suffoc suffocated by situations or scorched by the sun in petrous soil or snatched by Satan in the pathway, uh, in the pathway, but the seed also falls on productive soil. And productive soil is sustained by a surety. A surety that you and I have. A faith that, is, that fully accepts and believes God's word. With a childlike innocence. Trusting that even though all the answers are not present. The hearer understands and believes and obeys what it says to do. And in proportion, their faith and obedience manifests the fruit of God's desires and reward. For the scripture says that the seed falls on good ground. It falls on good ground. But one sown on good ground is one who hears the word and understands it and produces fruit and yields some 60, some 30, some 100 fold. I remember, I recall a brother which I will meet in heaven um, when, when I get there um, many years ago. My wife could remember him. He was a drug addict. He heard the word and he received Christ as his savior and he was coming through. And sometimes he would be clean for about a year. You know? But when circumstances hit, he would fall back. I remember saying to my then pastor, I, I, I got anxious with him. Right? I got anxious with him. You know? And I said, oh man, I can't take on Brother Irwin. Man, I can't understand. The man be doing no good. And, and, and then... Go, go fall back back into that crack house. I remember my pastor pulling me aside and giving me some sage instruction. He said, Merlin, you do not know what it feels like to be an addict. You have no idea what that feels like. You have no clue of the struggles he is going through. But the Holy Spirit will work him. I want to testify to the greatness of God. That when he passed from this earth. He passed from this earth in the hands of Jesus. Serving the Lord. Not, not, not dependent upon cocaine. Crack cocaine. And I will see him in heaven. When we meet over there. I want to share this thought with you and, 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 and let us grasp this understanding that knowledge is a garden. This is an African proverb. If it isn't cultivated, you can't harvest it. Knowledge is a, is, is a garden. And if it isn't cultivated, you can't harvest it. Having the right mindset is equally important to knowing the mission. The question is to us, the question to us is, what has God called the church to do in the earth? Why are we here? How are we to carry out the mission? What are the timelines? To complete the, the assignment. How should we be thinking. If we want to be successful on this mission. Jesus said if you love me. 
you will keep my commandments. So I want to talk to you now. I want to bring your attention to the sorrow of the harvest. The mission and the mindset. Matthew 13, 1 to 3 tells us that the sower went out to sow. That's the mission. The sower must be clear about the call. Many are unclear about the role of the church. However, that fogginess is not because our leader was unsure about what he wanted us to achieve. Matthew 8 Matthew 28, 18 to 20 is the clearest mission statement or commission statement there is. Yet many miss the boat. We are to go to all nations and make disciples. That is, so preach the word, baptize, teach, pray and do everything to facilitate the mission. That's what we got to do. The sower must be clear about the call. The sower must be concerned about the community. We're talking about the mindset and the mission of the sower. The sower must be concerned about the community. People we minister to are not only situated within the four walls of the building. Rather, our influence, you may not know it, you may not be aware of it, but our influence stretches into homes and institutions and places of business and recreation in our locality. There are people watching you as you come to this building they may not have they may, they may, may not even speak to you but they're watching your life cuz guess what they're living in the same economy as you they're faced with the same challenges as you they know that one of your family members passed away too and they're they're looking at you you are a living walking sermon to each of them they're watching you Eyes are on you. So we must be concerned about our community. We are not we, we 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 are influencing people in our locality. And also it spreads everywhere we are present. We must spread the seed and love for our Lord of the harvest to everyone we meet. We labor because we love him and want to please him. You hear that? We labor, no, we, we, don't, we don't labor for the pastor. We labor for the Lord. We don't labor for people to look at us. We labor for the Lord. We don't labor for your boss at work. You labor for the Lord. God qualifies it. He said, listen, work as heartily as unto the Lord. Don't be a servants. We work, we labor for the Lord. We labor because we love him and we want to please him. And we are fully invested in his harvest because we want to bring glory to him. I want to share something with you. In reading this scripture about the, about the harvest, right smack dab in the middle of this uh, account here, you have Jesus speaking the parable about the sower. And then we have Jesus before he explains it, he says something here. Now, in only three Gospels, we find the account of the sower. But in four Gospels, we find this statement. 
that Jesus made in all forms. That is why I speak, this is verse 13, Matthew 13, 13. That is why I speak to them in parables because looking they do not see, hearing they do not listen <coughs> or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says you will listen and listen but never understand. You will look and look and never perceive for this people's heart has grown callous. Their ears are hard of hearing and they have shut their eyes. Otherwise, they might see and their eyes and with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn back and I would heal them. This thing that, this statement that Jesus made originated in heaven. For the prophet Isaiah, when he was, I think it was about a 50-year reign with his cousin Uzziah. Uzziah was Isaiah's cousin. King Uzziah was Isaiah's cousin. All right? And Isaiah was in the employ of the king's service. And Isaiah was the prophet of the Lord. But Isaiah, though being a prophet of the Lord in the king's service, it was only when his cousin Uzziah died. No, Uzziah was a really, really good king. He had, he had Israel on lock economically. Things were prosperous in Israel. But when Uzziah died, he saw the Lord seated high and his train filled the temple. And he said, Woe is me, for I am ruined. Isaiah, a prophet for all of those years, when he saw the Lord recognized, I am in trouble. I am in trouble because why? I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among people with unclean lips. I speak things that I shouldn't speak. I get into conversations that I shouldn't get into. Sometimes a lie will slip out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes an unkind word. Sometimes a flattery. He said, I am undone because I have seen the king, the lord of armies. And then God cleanses his lips by sending an angel to take the coals from the altar and touch his lips. Anybody ever drank some hot tea? So you know that coals on the lips, that was painful. That was painful. That was painful. Because what caught my attention is that the angel took up the coals with the tongues. He didn't take them up with his hands. But he put the coals on Isaiah's lips. So the angel ain't getting burned. This burning is for you, boss man. To cleanse you. His lips were cleansed. And when his lips were cleansed, then he heard the voice of the Lord. When Isaiah was cleansed, he heard God. And he heard God asking one question. Who will I send? And who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, here am I, send me. God gave him the mission. But on sending him on the mission, God prepared his mindset. He said, I'm sending you someplace, but I want you to understand the people that I'm sending you to. Go say to these people, keep listening, and do not un you, but you do not understand. Keep looking, but you do not perceive. Make the minds of these people dull. Deafen their ears. Blind their eyes. 
Otherwise, they might see with their heart, with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their mind, and turn back and be healed. That sounds like, that sound like God unfair, though. But God was, manif God was showing you or showing the people what was already in their heart. They were already in this condition. And he said, when you go and speak to them, they will pay you no mind, but speak to them. I'm going to let you know why God speaks his word. You don't have to judge anybody. We are not supposed to judge anybody as in not judging and saying, condemn that person. We can judge between right and wrong. We can say what you are doing is wrong. And if you don't stop it, God will deal with you. But we cannot say, well, you're going to hell. Because that is not our purview. But I can tell you, when we speak the word, the judgment of God is in that word. And God gave him a timeline on how he should speak this message. He said, until when, Lord... Isaiah said, well, you're giving me a message to speak. Until then, Lord, and here is what God says. Until the cities lie in ruins without inhabitants. Houses are without people. Lands, the land is ruined and desolate. The Lord drives the people away from the land, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tenth will remain in the land, it will be, it will be burned again like a, um, a Terenabeth or an oak. And that the leaves, that leaves a stump, fell. The holy seed is the stump. You know who's that holy seed? Jesus. He was talking about that. He was talking about that in the Old Testament. But Jesus brought it over in the New Testament to show us that this applies to us today. How long you are supposed to preach the word? How long you are supposed to sow the seed? Till there are no people left to hear it. That is what the church is here for. Yes, we have programs. Yes, you know, we come and we do things. But you are not here coming to warm the bench. Or the, well, the chairs, no. The nice chairs, fancy chairs. But you're not here to come and sit in fancy chairs. You are here to be a part of the harvest. You may be a little shy. You may not be the, you may not be ones that are that 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 is articulate with words, but you can pray. You can cook. You can teach Sunday school. Huh? You can be a part of the men's ministry. You can be a part of the women's ministry. There is something here for you to do. And all that is being done in this place is to ensure. That the people around hear the word of God. We coming down the line. Listen. So the sower must be consistent with the communication. Often when we are speaking to someone else. We monitor if that person is listening. And depending on the circumstance or with whom we are speaking. We ask questions. Or we change our tone or raise our voices. You listening to me? John Theophilus. Branch. You are listening to me? We change our tone, raise our voices. Or we just stop talking. But I know when my wife stop talking with his. Because sometimes she be talking to me and they don't be listening. You know? I tell her I can't walk and chew chewing gum. She said, you're going to learn to multitask. I said, I can't walk and chew chewing gum. You know what I'm saying? One thing at a time. I want track mine. I take my one thing at a time. But when she realizes that I'm not listening, she stopped talking. You know what God has given you the silent treatment too? Yes. If God's speaking to you and speaking to you, you're not listening, God stop talking to you. Stop talking to you. They have some people that you have to stop talking to them about God and start talking to God about them. Hmm. We may determine when we stop talking that this isn't working and engage a different strategy or mode of communication or solicit the help of someone you trust. Uh, uh, you would say like, 
like some supervisors, <laughs> some supervisors, people at work, it's like, look, see if, you, see if you could talk to him, right? I want you to see if you can talk to him because I don't want to deal with him based on how he dealing with me. See if you can talk to him. See if you can get through to that person. You know, talk to them for me. See if you talk to them, say to them. Look, don't give up because you are not seeing the results you think that should be evident at the stage that you are at. Some plants require more work and attention to bring them to fruition. Yes. So the sower, the mindset and the mission of the sower, the mindset of the sower, the sower must be committed to the crop. Look, the success of the harvest heavily rests upon you, the people in this community that are not saved yet. God depending upon you and me, all of we, to share. Because what may happen is that they may not listen to you in your community, but I may butt up one of them at work or in the supermarket or someplace. And I have to have that word ready to share with them. Look, the success of the harvest depends upon you. Look, your labor has great value. You bring a uniqueness to the harvest. Look, there are some persons that will only that only you can reach. You hear that? There are some persons that only you can reach. And God has sent his specialist laborer which is you, across their path. You may ask, why me? Well, you've been battered, bruised, and torn, but you're still here. Some days your life was filled with fear. Oh, but you are still here. So many times we had to fight just to stay, to stay in the right. We may, we have failed so many, many, many times. But we are still here. Mm -hmm. We had many disappointments. But we are still here. There were days when we thought we could make it. But Lord, we're still here. So many storms we had to bear. Lord, for your joy, for the, for your joy they can't compare. Storms of sickness, storms of strife, but we are still here. We've been abused and misused, but we're still here. We've been persecuted. And accused, but we still here. Lord, it's such joy, such a joy to know that your love is keeping us so through the valley. We had to go, but we are still here. Why are we here? We are, here, we are here to praise his name. Lord, we are still here because you took the blame for us. Seems like our life was all so wrong. But your love, Lord, has kept us strong amid the gloom and despair. Lord, your love has kept us here. You got a story. You got a testimony. And your testimony may save somebody from committing suicide. Your testimony may save somebody from committing crime. Your testimony will save somebody from the lake of fire. Labor on, saints. There is value in your vocation.
finally, I want to talk to you about the success. The success of the harvest. And it's simple. Don't be distracted. Labor on. Young man, don't be distracted. Labor on. Mm -hmm. Stay focused here. Stay focused. Give God. God gave his highest and his best. And he is fully invested in this harvest. And he has thoughtfully entrusted you and I with this harvest. What will you do with it? What will you do with what God has entrusted to you? I say to you, don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged. Labor on. Don't be discouraged. Labor on. You are called to sow everywhere you go. Don't let figures or facades or faces phase you. Trust in his grace to complete your assignment. Labor on. Labor on. Don't be discouraged. Don't deviate. Labor on. Listen. John 12. Remember I told you. We can, remember I told you there's something that Jesus said that spanned the four gospels. John 12, 40 says, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes would not so that they would not see with their eyes or understand with their hearts that and turn and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke about him, Jesus. Nevertheless, many did not believe in him among the rulers because of the Pharisees. They did not confess him so that they would not be banned from the synagogue. People know, they hear, they know the word of God. But what happens with them? They love human praise more than praise from God. And Jesus gives us, look, Jesus tells us, don't deviate. Don't deviate. The one who believes in me. The one who believes in me. Believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And the one who sees me, sees not only me, but him who sent me. I have come as a light to the world, so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I don't judge them. For I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me doesn't and doesn't receive my sin has the word as his judge. The word that we preach. So when a lot of people don't like to go door to door or witnessing because they don't like the feeling of rejection. But in rejecting you, they reject the word and the judgment of the word is upon them. He said, for I have not spoken of my own. Look, this, look listen to this. If there's anything that you, if you forget everything I told you this morning, don't forget this one. Write this one down. Write this, write this down. Jesus said, this is John 12, 49. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command to say everything I have said. I know that his command is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father told me. Don't forget this. Here is Jesus' secret to success. Stay connected to the Father and do only what you see the Father doing and say only what you hear him say. I challenge you today. 
to labor on. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we've heard your word. Some of it is tough for us to deal with. But you know exactly what we need to hear and how we need to hear it. We pray today, Lord, that this word that has been deposited in our heart, this seed, Lord, would bear fruit. We desire a hundredfold. Help us to deal with the things that in our lives that would stop us from producing to our maximum and give us a fresh heart a fresh desire to work in the kingdom a fresh desire to see those in the location where our church is planted now in our communities where we are from in our families in our workplaces a fresh desire to see them saved, a fresh anointing, to share the word. Bless all the workers here, from the pastor to the one, the custodian who cleans the building. From the greatest to the smallest, Touch these little children. May the seed of your word affect their lives and transformation take place. God, help us today. To hear, to understand, and to obey your word. In Jesus' name. We pray, O oh God, Lord of the harvest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Truly, we were challenged this morning by the word. We want to... Remember that this is time. We want to remember the seed, the sower, and the success of the harvest. Seed, the sower, and the success of the harvest. Seed being the word, sower being ourselves. We are all sowers. We know what our mission and our mindset is. We are very clear about our call. And we want to be concerned about our community. We don't want to deviate. We don't want to be distracted. We don't want to go astray. But we want to stay connected and we want to labor on. There are many distractions, but we know our success relies on staying connected to the source. Because when we stay connected to the source, then he will enable and empower us and equip us to labor on despite all of the challenges and the crises, etc. Amen? Amen. Truly this morning, I have been challenged. I have been convicted. And I trust that change would be had in our lives, even as we go out and we press on, we press through, we labor on for the kingdom of God. Minister Yard, we want to thank God. Truly, he has given you a rima word for us. And we are grateful that you have shared it with us. And we were all challenged. And as we go out, we will apply God's word, and wherever we go, we heard all the messages in the recitations, the poetry, the combined choir, we hear all of these messages and everything 
is woven together and we, we see how God is speaking to us this morning. He wants us to do work for him, to continue to do work, to be a co-laborers. And you know what? The labor that we are doing is not in vain. It is not in vain. We're doing it out of love for him. That's what motivates us because of the love of the Lord. That motivates us to labor for him. And we know that the harvest is plentiful. And this morning, it will not be said that the laborers are few because we are going to get on board. Amen? And we are going to share God's word wherever we go. We're not confined to these walls, but even as we go to our workplaces and our schools, our community, wherever we go, or amongst our family, we want to share the word of God. We want to lead, lead others to Christ. We want to deposit that seed. Remember, we're not responsible for the fruit, but we're going to do our part in sowing that seed. Leave the results to God. God is going to soften the hearts. God is going to work on person's heart. So don't worry about that. It's good to see numbers. It is good to see persons come into relationship. But sometimes we water. Sometimes we sow. God will grant the increase, right? So let's continue to do what? Labor on. What are we going to do? Labor on. We are going to labor on. So God bless you, sir. May he continue to recharge you and renew you. Bless your family. Thanks for sharing your testimony interwoven in the message. We were truly, truly, truly challenged this morning. And we pray that God will continue to use you to bring glory and advance his kingdom and honor to his name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Until the harvest is gone, we are going to labor on. Amen. At this time, I'm going to call on the combine choir, and they're going to do their final number. Immediately after that, we're going to have the notices by our secretary, and then our pastor will follow, and she will give the closing remarks and the prayer. Amen. Amen.
before Sister Andrea comes to give the notices, I want to express sincere appreciation, since you wouldn't be hearing my voice again, to Alyssa and Aaron and, Ma and Malia and three of them, the young people, we thank you for making yourself available to minister this morning. You did extremely well. I'm so pleased and proud of you. When I whisper into the ears of those this morning, those persons only learned those on Saturday, believe it or not, and all of them did well. I am so proud of you. Hugs for you after. Amen. These are my children. Amen. We want to thank Sister McCollin for making herself available as well to minister. You are all laborers in God Vineyard this morning. You made yourself available, and persons are going to hear your word or the words through um, the online media or even here. We are spreading through poetry. Poetry is a ministry. Recitations are ministries. I want to thank the Combined Choir. Beautiful numbers. Beautiful numbers. Numbers with very profound words. Ashton, good job. That's the lone man that's bringing out the rear. I'm sorry, Joshua, sorry. Joshua, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joshua. You're not even a man in making. You're a man already. But he will forgive me because that's my son, the school child. Men, we thank you. Ladies, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. I was there. It reminds me. <laughs> Remember, the Carter used to be leading the, the choir. Um, so God bless you, Sister Clovine. God bless you. God bless you. We were certainly encouraged. Worship team, Sister Jonel and team, musicians, God bless you all. Thank you for your labor of love this morning. And of course, sir, even although I commended you this morning, this morning I want to say a hearty thank you on behalf of our pastors and our members and the local board of administration for accepting our invitation. And coming despite your challenging, we, you delivered. God would have used you in a mighty way. And we are all encouraged this morning. God richly, richly, richly bless you. And for you who came this morning, we want to thank you for choosing Woburn. We want to thank you for being here. We want to thank you for participating and singing and, and encouraging all those ministering servants who came. So let us labor on. Let us labor on in love because of the love of the lord of the harvest we will continue to labor on and remember the harvest is not done yet in fact it's plentiful so we got a lot of work to do yes but god is going to enable and empower and equip us god bless you richly sister andrea you will come do the notices and immediately after that our dear pastor is going to give the closing remarks and prayer Good morning to the church. The reminders of the notices are as follows. Um, tomorrow night, we have Women's Forum, and this is online at 7. Tuesday will be youth service, and this is also online at 7.15. Wednesday, we have our prayer and fasting, and this is starts at 6 a.m. And the prayer points are as follows. We pray that we would offer ourselves to God as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto him. And the scripture references Romans 12, 1. We also have um, prayed that sacrificial worship to God will be our lifestyle, thankfully acknowledging and confess and glorify his name and show good conduct in our behavior to one another. And that scripture references Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. Of course, I will send these out in the email as well. On Wednesday, we have Bible study, and this will be at 7 p.m. Our facilitator will be Sister Colette. On Saturday, we have our morning prayer, and the facilitator for that will be Sister Deslyn McKenzie. Our parenting series continues, and this is at 5.30 here in the church. We have some birthdays for the April Borns. We have Sister Doris, who celebrates her birthday tomorrow. And she will be followed by Sister Ellis, who celebrates her birthday on Tuesday. We have Sister Sharon coming in on Wednesday. And Brother Devonte is on the 13th, as well as Sister Larna. So we want to wish you all a blessed day. Don't mind, it's not the best month of the year. There's no winner for him.
Okay, so I understand there's no women's forum tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have practice, combine choir again. Okay, combine choir, we're practicing tomorrow. So there's no women's forum tomorrow night. Now we have some upcoming activities. We have our 80th anniversary celebrating this month. Um, the service will be on the 28th, and this will be at 9.30. We do have some lead-up activities, so we'll keep you informed regarding that um, during the coming weeks. So just listen out for the activities that will be leading up to the 80th anniversary service. We have our sponsor walk on the 1st of May. We're meeting here at the church for 545, and persons are asked to, um, if you have completed your sponsor walk sheets, to just give them over to Sister Felicia, and you can get another one if they're available. <laughs> yes, of course, with the money. <laughs> so that's the sponsor wash sheets. If they're completed, you can give them to Sister Felicia. And then we have our Mother's Day service, which is on the 12th. And of course, we're having a luncheon as well. Tickets are available. The adult tickets are $65 and the children are $20. Now there's limited seating, we can, they can only hold 75. This will be at the Valley Resource Center. So if you want to be in attendance, I encourage you to get your tickets as early as possible, seeing that the seating is limited. So we have six, 75 seating, and let me give you the cost of the tickets again, $65 for adults, $20 for the children, and you can get those tickets from the committee members, Sister Donna, Sister Roletta, Sister Colette, Sister Sanjean, Sister Caroline, Sister Felicia, and Sister Doris. So don't wait too late, get your tickets now. You can get them after church? Yes, you can get them after church, Sister Doris is here telling me. So don't wait too late, okay? I think that's all the notices I have for the week, as I said. We'll be having some activities, and we want to encourage all to take part. It's going to be a week of activities leading up to the anniversary service, and it, it's going to be old time setting. So we want to encourage you to participate. I'll be coming to some persons to do um, some of the activities as well. So just bear in mind, we're laboring on. Make yourselves available. Amen. A wonderful good afternoon to everyone here in the sanctuary and those of you following us online. I would just want to say that on this day, this blessed day that the Lord has given to us, and we have truly rejoiced, and I'm sure we are glad to be alive today, and more importantly, gathered here to give God all the praise and all the glory that he deserves. And to you, Brother Yard, thank you for accepting our invitation and your lovely wife accompanied you. And there's a story behind Brother Yard being here. When leading up to the harvest, I prayed, Lord, who would you want me to share your word? And Brother Yard was the only person that came to my mind. But I called Brother Yard seven times before I got him. <laughs> and on the seventh call and I didn't get him, I was like, just as he said this morning, look, I better look for somebody else. Oh, I was sitting down this Saturday morning just after pray. And the Spirit said, call him now. And as I called, the phone rang about four or five times, and then I heard his voice on the other end of the line. Now you understand why I had to labor on <laughs> in getting him. Because this message this morning, God had it for this church on this morning by this gentleman. And the Lord don't ever make mistakes. 
And so as Deaconess Laura would have said, I am sure every one of us here this morning have been challenged. Have been challenged. And long after we go through that door, the word that God has sent for us this morning, and I am going to hope that none of us here ears are so deaf that we have not heard, or that our eyes are so dim that we cannot see, or our mouth is so whatever that we will not speak. God is constantly speaking, not to one to us. And all he wants us to do is to obey. Praise the Lord. And I'm not going to preach over his message. You know, sometimes we don't see the result that we think we should see when we supposed to see them. It's not about us. It's about God. And therefore, we must do what? labor on in spite of we must labor on so let me thank everyone who participated in this service this morning under the enabling power of the holy spirit and if you did not minister directly you were here to participate in this worship service and you online and we know that the lord word will not return void it will do what it were say to do in God's time, of course. I will just thank the choir. And there's a story behind the choir as well. You see me here? I remember some nights, Sister Clovis said, Oh Lord, I like to sing it to myself. I like to talk it to myself. Because sometimes when we could get the part, we become frustrated. But this morning, praise the Lord. Because we labored on, Hallelujah. we were able to praise God. And for those who say they didn't go and join, we call we old. And that's the old choir. Well, we might be old, but we surely ain't cold. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So as we go down this week, let us continue to praise the Lord. And in spite of, let us labor on. The conditions are not always going to be favorable, but God will always give us favor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us stand. <laughs> and let us close with the word of prayer. Father, we... Thank you this morning for waking us up. We move and breathe only because of you. Indeed, you are a great God and you are a faithful God. A God who will never lie or fail. And though sometimes, Lord, from time to time, we do fail you. Sometimes we feel like we don't want to labor on. But, Father, your word come to remind us yet again this morning that the harvest is truly plentiful. And that you would have come to this earth and you would have done what you had to do during your period of time. And as we would have just celebrated last week, all that you would have done and gone through, help us remember that just because you've gone back to your father, the labor does not stop. And so today we are your people at this appointed time to carry on your work by sharing your word, Lord. And so help us, Lord, this morning where we may be weak, where we may be frustrated and discouraged, whatever it may be. Help us to remember that even you and your humanity say to your father, Father, if it is possible for me to carry on this labor another way, please offer me. But if you don't, nevertheless. And so, Father, help us to constantly adopt the nevertheless attitude, Lord, and press forward. 
Because as your word said this morning, there's the seed, there's the sower, and there is success. And our success, Lord, will not be measured here on earth. It will be measured in heaven. When we stand before you, and we have to give an account of our service and stewardship, Lord. I pray that our service on that day, all of us here, that our service would have been so pleasing to you that we will get to reign with you forevermore. Father, as we would leave here this morning, we are leaving this building, but we are not leaving you behind. We are taking you with us, and all that would have happened here this morning. Help us to continue, Lord, to reflect. Help us to continue that as you would reveal to us where we need to measure up, Lord, that we will be obedient, and we will submit ourselves to you, that you could continue to renew our minds and transform our heart and revive us so that we will be effective vessels for you. This morning, Lord, remember those who could not have been here for whatever reason, Lord. Some because of ailments, Lord, and some because of maybe circumstances beyond their control. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this worship. And we pray that it would have gone up as a sweet-smelling savor to your nostrils. And that all of us here, and in the hearing of it, will be the greater beneficiaries of it. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God richly bless you. Greet someone as you leave and share a word of encouragement.